This is Amplifying Voices, Speaking Up and Speaking Out for Children, a three-part video professional development series for anyone involved in the field of urban education. This series is brought to you by the UW-Milwaukee Institute for Urban Education, a UW system-sponsored program supporting educators through research, professional development, and clinical experiences. Each session of the series will feature a diverse panel of participants that discuss common equity issues impacting urban education, such as the disproportionate referrals to special education, disparities in school discipline practices, and the connection of literacy and social justice. Now is the time to challenge the status quo of harmful educational practices. The UW-Milwaukee Institute for Urban Education considers this video professional development series as seeds to plant in order to grow honest, deeper conversations around how to improve outcomes for diverse students in an educational system that wasn't built for the success of all students. Here are some previews from two different sessions. The disproportionality, some people will say, oh, well, that's just because Black boys or Black children just are better, more uh, poorly behaved, and that's why they are uh, showing up as uh, being identified at higher rates as emotional behavioral disorders. And, and that the, does not bear out in the research. Uh, EBD is a category that's really um, dependent on clinical judgment. Can you share a little bit with us, Gabrielle, about your lived experience with that? Our big problem was his behavior, which is where it came to them wanting to place him in EBD and self-contain and things like that, but them not looking at the trauma that was actually kind of taken, you know, behind the scenes. Um, him going through significant losses, um, transitioning, it was just tough emotionally for him. And then on top of that, him trying to figure out what am I feeling, what am I going through, and then going through the long process as a parent of what is going on with my kid. <laughs> you know, like taking him to the doctor, finding the right medication, just finding the right counselor for him. Um, it's all a long process. It began to morph into the school. So by the early 90s, the school system started taking on zero uh, tolerance policies and and actually it was uh, formalized in um, some grants or um, entitled uh, uh, gun free safe schools and many schools began to take on these zero uh, uh, tolerance policies but mainly for the purpose of trying to get rid of gangs or drugs in the schools. And this was the early 90s. But by the mid or late 90s, um, all of that was ratcheted up and escalated when we began to have what we call uh, shooting rampages in our schools. And probably the one uh, uh, shooting or rampage that comes to everybody's mind was Columbine. But we had quite a few of them starting in the late 90s and they've continued even on, uh, up to today. At this point, I want to really go to Andre to give us the school context um, and hear what's happening from your perspective as an administrator in one of the schools. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, I think Dr. Gwen hit it on the head. Um, we, we know that these policies don't work. And, and as she stated earlier, that a number of these policies have been or began to be outlawed or removed from uh, a lot of uh, student manuals and, and student expectation manuals and, and across districts, at least here in our state, but I know for a fact this is you know, really across the nation. But I think some of those policies are, so, are now so embedded into how we look at discipline in our districts that even though they're not necessarily on paper as such, as such, they, that doesn't mean that they aren't implement, implemented as, you know, as such. Thought-provoking questions and optional processing activities for groups are included in each of the sessions. Sessions can be done independently at your own pace or as a group, shared via our online platform, Canvas. This series will generate important conversations around educational equity that profoundly impact marginalized groups of students. Our hope is that through intentional conversations, educators think deeply about how to address the inequities they have influence over. 
For information on the Amplifying Voices professional development video series, please email us at iue-info at uwm.edu.